ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, um, I'll be putting out a debt validation letter that will encompass a couple of things. Now, let's pay attention to one case. I've already checked these cases out, so just letting you know, I'm just having it redo it. This case held that obligations denominated in dollars can be satisfied with legal tender, including bills of exchange. Supreme Court affirmed that federal government has the authority to issue bills of exchange as legal tender. Yeah, because they did that with the ninth, uh, March 9, 1933 Act. The court upheld the federally issued bills of exchange are to be treated as the equivalent of cash payment. They're federally issued because Congress authorized it. We're not going to go through this whole thing, okay? These are just a case, and we're putting interrogatories in this. I'm, I'm not going to finish that. It's already been done, okay? But hold on. Watch this. Wake up. Wake up. I am what is classified as a non-citizen national. Comma, I am not a citizen of the United States. Comma, I was not born in the United States. Comma, I was born in the state of California. Comma, without the United States, because California, it's its own sovereign territory. Exclamation mark. The law recognizes my status as a non-citizen national, comma, I do not have a social security number, comma, as the social security owns the social security number and the social security card, so it is not mine, I do not possess it, and I do not accept the usury tax associated thereto. Period. A tax is a penalty. Tax. Exclamation mark. I need to create a declaration evidencing this fact. and also the fact of my non-national citizenship status. As expressed in congressional legislation. Stop listening. All right, ladies and gentlemen, what's going on here is we've had a lot of people refer to themselves as non-citizen nationals, and they've been trying to produce their own documents and create their own world when you must, you must follow their policies, not yours. You can't create your own policy. Can't, you can create your own documents, but you got to do it the right way. So let ChatGPT do it for you. I just put in several case citations in chat GPT to handle it. Give me a second. I am warming up some foods and the food that I'm warming up is because I just got back home and I have I eaten today. All I had today was a little bit. And so now I'm about to eat a little bit, just a little bit more. Freddie Jackson and Melba Mo. Okay. So I'm about to eat just a little bit more, so y'all will have to excuse me that I stepped away from the computer for a second. It wasn't intentional. Okay, I should have turned it off, but something said, you ain't going to be there that long. And I was there longer than I wanted to be. This video ain't going to be long because the food's almost ready. Now hold on, let mama sit up here and tell y'all what y'all need to do. Because mama know. Based on your request and the provided document, non-citizen section 302 of Public Law 944-241, Statute 90-PG263.PDF, I have prepared a declaration that evidences your status as a non-citizen national, along with relevant case law and statutory references to support your position.
Declaration of Non-Citizen National Status, your name, your address, city, state, zip code, email address, phone number, date, um, to whom it may concern, Declaration of Non-Citizen National Status, I hereby declare under penalty of perjury under the laws of the United States of America that the following statements are true and correct. One, no under penalty of perjury. I was born in the state of California, which is a sovereign territory. I am not a citizen of the United States as defined by federal statutes, but rather a non-citizen national. My status as a non-citizen national is recognized by Public Law 94-241, Section 302, which allows individuals to declare their intention to be a national, but not a citizen of the United States. Two, non-citizen national status, Section 302 of Public Law 94-241, approved March 24, 1976, provides that individuals who become U.S. Citizens solely by virtue of this section may declare themselves to be nationals, but not citizens of the United States within six months after reaching the age of 18. Pursuant to this law, I have made such a declaration under oath before a court of record. Three, social security and taxation. Give I do me a not second. possess a social security number as I do not accept the usury and obligations associated with the social security give, system. Give me a second, y'all. I got I to gotta check him. Penalty. Ain't nobody doing nothing, no, no penalty or nobody's perjury and nobody asked them for all of that. Give me a second. I did this wrong. Okay, y'all have to excuse me. This is under Covington law. I don't want it under Covington because you guys won't have access to it. I got to put this under. Oh, you see, there was a lot of information. I didn't just give him a little bit. I gave him a lot of it. Okay. Ooh, wait, look at all of that that I gave him. That right that there. Okay, let's go back up. Okay, right there. And then I got to put the document back in. So y'all, y'all excuse me. We're going to hit copy. And we're going to go to. Let's go here. All right. Now we can do this right here. Easier this way. All right. Now we're going to put the same thing in there again. Okay. Same thing. Now watch this. <sighs> TikTok, hickory dickory, you know what I'm saying? Running mice's clocks and everything. Okay, so let's see if he does that under penalty of perjury. Okay, he knew what he was doing when he did all that book. I mean that stuff. Okay, and then legal basis for non-citizen national status, and then it says Supreme Court recognized the distinction between the state and the federal citizenship reinforcing the concept of state sovereignty i do not possess or accept the social or accept the social security number as social security number and the social security card is owned by the social security administration you don't have to do i do not possess you don't have to do that I, you don't have to do i do not possess or accept the social security number okay now watch this we're going to take care of that wake up I did not ask you to add, I do not possess or accept the social security number, comma, why would you be so stupid? Did I ever imply such a presumption? Do it right this time. And for each section, you need to add two case citations, aside from the case citations you've already included, to support the context of each section. Is that understood? Stop listening. Stop listening. Sorry about that. When I'm doing the question marks, I can't do stop listening or it will type it in. Okay. And he still did the affirm and declaration case citations. Blah, 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 blah. And legal basis for non-citizen national status. And he puts case citations. Exactly what I asked him to do. Pay attention. And then congressional legislation, and I need to get the Social Security part. That's what I want to see what he's going to do there, because I done told him. And, okay, thank you for the case citation. Would you hurry up? I, oh, he didn't do the Social Security thing. Did y'all see that? Hold on. Let me let me make sure. Uh, congressional legislation. Uh-huh. Slaughterhouse. I know about Slaughterhouse. Y'all should know about Slaughterhouse. Y'all got to look up that case. 
Oh, look at it. He didn't say anything about Social Security. Wake up. You left the section out of it declaring that I do not own the Social Security card or the Social Security number. That that is the property of the Social Security Administration. And you need to provide five case citations documenting and evidencing this fact which also documents that driver's licenses and other government issued documents are the property of the government and not the property of the recipient. Is that understood? Stop listening. He does the birth certificate thing. He does that all right. So we're going to let him go. And then, oh, you guys are going to get the link for this one, uh, Legal Basis for Non-Citizenship of the United States, and he puts in the laws, Supreme Court, and all of that stuff. And then he does the congressional legislation, which is that act that talks about non-citizen national status. And then he puts in rights and sovereignty, how the state is not the United States, and my being a civilian, not a citizen. Okay? So we're going to take care of that. Now, he does the penalty of perjury thing. Uh, let's see. No, he didn't add Social Security. Oh, Social Security card and government-issued identification. I do not own a Social Security card, Social Security number, as they are the property of the Social Security Administration. Similarly, government-issued documents, such as driver's license, then are the property of the issuing government and not the property of the recipient. Now, these cases show that the court upheld the constitutionality of the Social Security Act, affirming the federal government control of the Social Security numbers and cards. Okay, now got that. Wake up. You will not declare this under penalty of perjury, you idiot. Penalty of perjury is a statute and not a law. Exclamation mark. And I need more professionalism here, comma, that's not professional enough. That just sounds like a bunch of rambling words. Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, when you're going to court, the first thing I would do is I would notify the court of your status, who you are. Okay, we're, we're gonna take care of it, give me a second. Wake up. You're also going to evidence that I am not the legal fiction, comma, the legal person, comma, the juristic person, comma, I am not the persona. Or any other construct, comma, that I am a natural person under the common sense of the word person and not the legal term, open quote, person, close quote, period. Legal terminology did not invent or create the word person and that my words are to be construed in their normal everyday context and not as legal terminology. Comma, and I have a right to be communicated with in my language, which is not legal terminology. Exclamation mark. You're to provide five case citations evidencing the fact that an individual has the right to receive communications from the court and other government agencies in their language. Comma, and failure to do so operates as a denial of due process. Exclamation mark. You're also going to include three case citations, which evidences that legal terminology is not English, nor a derivative thereof. Comma, and three case citations evidencing that legal terminology is a foreign language, 
respecting English. Exclamation mark. Stop listening. Stop listening. My hope is, ladies and gentlemen, you guys will start to pick up on what I'm saying and why I'm saying it, and we'll be able to use it in other aspects. Okay? What's happening to all of you in court is that you're running into the language barrier, and you don't understand how to overcome that language barrier. Ladies and gentlemen, they can't force a language on you, nor can they force you to learn a new language just to communicate with them. You have the right to petition for redress of grievance, which means that they must communicate with you in your language. They can't communicate with you in the language that they choose. They don't have that luxury because it is a luxury. Where you sit in the lap of, that's a luxury. So they, they sit in the lap of luxury. And we're going to take some of that luxury away by challenging some of their stupidity. Some of their, well, you got to do it this way. You ain't got to do it no way. They're public servants. They've always been public servants, ladies and gentlemen. The only problem is they gain control of the military. And because they have control of the military and the police force, which is a military force for the city, and the sheriff's department, which is a military force for the county, because they have control over the military, that's how they gain control over the people. It's called a military coup. That's why the Trading with the Enemy Act is the Trading with the Enemy Act. One second. It's a military act. And once you understand that, and understand that they're handling in court, courts with an S, marshals with a hyphen, then you won't understand what's going on. It's going to take you a minute. So how do you check them? You check them with their own words. They created laws that say that you have the right to communicate with the court and be, to be communicated with in your language. Okay, so let's see what he had to say. Hey, 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 what you got to say? Legal terminology is not English, nor derivative thereof. It is considered a foreign language with respect to English. The court recognized the complexities and differences between legal terminology and everyday language. <laughs> the court highlighted the need for plain language to ensure understanding of legal rights. <laughs> the courts discussed the specialized nature of legal language, distinguishing it from English. The courts emphasize the importance of understanding legal language to ensure fair legal proceedings. Ladies and gentlemen, you are not required to understand legal language. There is no law. The right to communicate in plain language. Okay? There you go. So this will be for you. You guys can take it where you want to take it because I've already started the prompts for you. I've already got everything started. Got all the court cases and everything. Wait, hold on. Let's make sure that these prompts are correct. Let's say the right to communicate in a language that's plain and non-legalese. Watch this. See, he solemnly affirms he doesn't have to do it under penalty of perjury. Penalty of perjury is a statute. Don't ever sign anything under penalty of perjury. Why would you want to be under a statute? Okay, don't do that. There is no law requiring you to sign under penalty of perjury. Penalty of perjury is a statute. Look it up. Hold on, I just put this stuff in here, and it says the right to communicate in plain language by courts and government agencies is supported by both legal precedents and legislative requirements. The right is essential to ensure due process and effective communications, particularly for individuals who do not, who may not be familiar with legal terminology. Ta-da! So that's how you handle the courts, ladies and gentlemen. You hamstrung them. Go ahead and look up the phrase hamstrung and see what that really means. Uh, I said hamstrung, horse strung. <laughs> okay, go ahead and see what it means and see if you don't learn something. You're going to learn something. Okay, that I promise you. Guaranteed you, you come to this channel, you're going to learn something. Now, I got to go. All right, I got to go talk to Aunt Bessie. So y'all go ahead and take care of y'all business. I hope this information finds y'all in better spirits than you were in before you started watching. Those of y'all who got them short attention spans and can't pay attention to save your life, well, you're going to remain poor.
for the rest of eternity. What, if you can't pay attention to simple stuff like this, then you ain't got nothing coming for you. You're gonna always be struggling to make ends meet. You know why you're gonna be struggling to make ends meet? Because what you don't understand is two ends never meet. Lord have mercy. That's why you're gonna be struggling because you got that type of ignorance in your head. Talking about making ends meet. How dare you bring that junk up into my channel? All right, have a good day, everybody. We gone. We out of here. And wait, hold on. Perplexity. Hold on. We, we don't want y'all to feel left out. So watch this. Go all the way down to the bottom. Just so y'all can have the conversation from perplexity to copy. Watch this. Chat. Hey, chat. What up, homie? Hold on. Now, he's going to do the letter again because I did that. But that's okay. Y'all going to get it all. Okay? Y'all going to get it all. And so when you're going into court, asking them for the bond information and for them to show you the bond posting so you can know who the bond holder is, the holder in due course is, and the value of the bond and all of that stuff because you have a right to know all of the charges against you. When you're all going in there saying all of that, you're going in under the wrong capacity. Okay? You can title this, I don't appreciate the phrase, but you can title it a notice of special appearance. And you can challenge the jurisdiction. Wait, hold on. Let me do that for you. Wake up. I want you to title this document, Notice of Special Appearance, Challenging the Jurisdiction of All the Parties, with the exception of yourself, comma, as to their delegation of authority and their jurisdiction over your person, comma, in its natural state exclamation mark that you are not here representing a legal person and or a legal fiction and or a corporation and or a fictional persona exclamation mark that those entities comma the latter comma are creatures of the state creatures of government creatures of agencies creatures of departments Comma, and you do not accept the privileges or the benefits associated with such creatures. Period. Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, now you know what you can do. It'll keep adding to the letter whatever it is you want to add. Okay? So now he's challenging jurisdiction and he's doing the birth certificate and citizenship status. You got to establish your status on the record. Ladies and gentlemen, y'all ain't been doing that. Y'all been going in there saying all kind of dumb stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, the record is the documents. It's a court of record. That's why they're always documenting everything. The record is the document. So establish the record. Give them their record. It's a recording. You're documenting. That's your record. But you have to admit it into evidence. Watch this. Wake up. Wake up. This is being placed in a court of record, comma, so it has to be admitted into evidence under general evidence rules. Comma, you will comply with those rules within this writing. Is that understood? And you will document that it's being admitted as evidence into the record as required in law for courts of record. Comma, and because it's in affidavit format, failure to rebut it will hold every allegation mentioned herein as true. Period. And since they are foundational facts, comma, they must be rebutted by a preponderance of evidence to the contrary. Exclamation mark. Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, again, you'll get this for free. I got to wait for them to finish. Well, actually, I didn't have to wait for them to finish. I could have stopped them, but I wanted you guys to get all of the documents so that you can go and edit it however you choose. See, the last one. The first couple is for those agencies, offices, and stuff like that. All right, you'll get this shortly. Have a good day. Have a good day. End the uh, link.
of the description and in the title shall be the tiny link. Gotta go.